Prime Minister says... Potholes. We all hate them. The Chancellor refers to... The curse of potholes. But he goes on to offer a sum of money that forces us to accept a continued decline of our road network. Review allocated £500 million pounds every year to the Potholes Fund. But today I have decided to increase that fund by a further £200 million pounds next year to help local communities tackle this problem. Before the last local elections, one MP pointed out even at the best of times, it's a running joke among MPs that all politics is about potholes. The high-level problem with potholes is that they are not taken seriously. There is a huge mismatch between the public anger and the political debate, which sees it all as rather embarrassing. All road users, including motorcyclists, face inconvenience and damage to their vehicles. Patrick told us I had a pothole accident on the B4361 in Shropshire. National speed limit 60 miles an hour, I hit a pothole on a left-hand bend. I did not come off as the tyre didn't deflate immediately. It took a minute for the tyre repressure alarm to come on, but it cracked my front carbon wheel. But all too often, the results can be far worse. Bruce told us, I'm off sick at the moment as a result of the accident. The police who attended were convinced it was the pothole that brought me off. I was probably at no more than 25 to 30 miles an hour when it happened. But I ended up with six fractured ribs, three fractured vertebrae, a broken collarbone and a pneumothorax on my left lung. Simply avoiding the potholes and the material that comes out of them also poses a serious risk to motorcyclists. One rider said, I tried to avoid a pothole on Good Friday at a T-junction with a downhill camber. I got my foot down, but on the gravel from the pothole. The weight of the bike took me over and resulted in a cracked fairing, broken indicator, scratches to the fairing and a broken right foot. Injury can also result from road surfaces that councils do not accept need repair. Andrew told us, I had an accident due to potholes in February 2022. I tried to claim against the council, but they argued it wasn't a pothole due to it not being deep enough, even though there were several potholes and lots of resulting gravel making the road very uneven and unsafe. The accident resulted in damage to my bike and a broken foot for myself. These are far from isolated stories. Mag's analysis of contributory factors in STATS19 data has shown that on average road surface defects contribute to 70 riders being seriously injured and 4 being killed every year. The true number may be much higher. Some road safety professionals claim that any single vehicle motorcycle RTC is due to rider error. But how often is the real error trusting in authorities to maintain the roads? The most recent Asphalt Industry Alliance report on the state of local roads in England and Wales shows that resurfacing now takes place on average less than once per century. Local authority highway budget shortfalls in 2022-3 were up to record levels. And the cost of the backlog of repairs to bring the network back up to scratch is just over £14 billion. This is the highest it has ever been. Hi, my name is Rick Green. I'm the chair of the Asphalt Industry Alliance, known as the AIA. We hold this annual survey, um, which we send out to all the local authorities across England and Wales. It doesn't include Scotland. Uh, this year is the 27th time we've done that. So we've now got quite a long trend of data that you know, we could compare with previous years. The issue is not confined to England and Wales. We do speak to colleagues in Scotland and whilst they kind of hold their own version of, of, of this, and, and the results are similar, you know, th th this, th this isn't something that's unique to England and Wales, they're just not included in this particular report, but when we talk to them, they're seeing the same trends, they're saying the same things, and, and I'd be very, very surprised if Northern Ireland isn't much yeah. the same. Funding is clearly the starting point for solving the issue. 
Since about 2014, we've been running what we call a limited service policy on essential maintenance. So that's all the stuff like potholes, verges, gully emptying, signs, road markings, all that kind of stuff that's heavily safety focused. And essentially, the, the policy requires us to only repair the most significant defects. So that's the deepest potholes or problems that are most likely to impact driver or pedestrian safety. We do it simply because we don't have the money to do more. Everybody can see that the quality of the road network isn't what it used to be, because just like your house or your car, Things that aren't repaired in time end up needing more repair and costing more. But if we don't invest in road maintenance, we can't expect the quality of the road network to get any better. We are asking all MPs to push the Treasury to make a meaningful intervention. But the overarching thing is to do with how much will it cost to fix it. And that's at an all-time high. Uh, it's um, £40 billion pounds is what would be required to bring... The, the, the state of the roads back to a level where they could maintain them. I, on an annual basis, there's a shortfall in the amount of funding that they've received. However, that shortfall has been going on for years, so it's not surprising that the overall backlog is growing each year because each year they've not got enough money to do as much as they'd like. The state of the roads in England and Wales are as bad as they've ever been. This is the local authority network now, not the strategic network. Um, is as bad as it's ever been. Well, certainly for as long as we've done this survey for 27 years, and the amount they get in each year in order to fix it is as bad as it's been as well. I, I work closely with some of these local authorities and know the people involved and, and understand the systems and techniques and materials they're using. Um, I, I think they're doing a very, very difficult job. They've got a statutory obligation to maintain the roads in a safe condition, and yet, in our opinion, they're not getting sufficient funding to do that. The fundamental problem is they haven't got enough money. And if they had more money, they could definitely make an improvement. Yeah. Uh, we are promoting a petition to provoke a parliamentary debate, but would welcome any intervention from any MP to get this debate on the agenda. Ask your MP to contact MAG to discuss how we can work together. But it doesn't end there. We are not letting local authorities off the hook. They needn't think that funding is a blanket excuse for inaction. All government money is our money. We don't want it and spaffed up the wall. There are councils investing in modern equipment such as the JCB Pothole Pro. But there are more that are not making sensible investments. So we're here today with the JCB Pothole Pro in Stoke-on-Trent. This is a revolutionary machine that is able to cut, crop and clean in a single unit. It's fully road legal, it can road just like a car at 40 kilometres an hour and it's able to fix potholes four times quicker and at half the cost. What we try to do with this machine is focus on permanent repairs. Much like when you go to the dentist when you've got tooth decay, the dentist removes all of that damaged material before placing in the filling. That's what we try to do with the road surface. Remove all of that damage decay, all the cracks and crazing that a lot of riders experience on roads today in the UK, creating then a permanent repair. The repairs that our customers achieve with the Pothole Pro is top calibre. The reason for that is we take out all of the damaged material. Rather than the traditional throw and go methodology, whereby you're simply putting material into the, the cavity that exists today, what we try to do is excavate all of the damaged material. Therefore, a permanent repair that lasts. So this machine was tried and tested on UK roads, working with councils like Stoke-on-Trent that are looking for innovation, looking for best practice. And that's what we've developed this machine around, the challenges that councils face today. The potholes is a very emotive topic. Everyone has a story about potholes, but it's an incredibly serious issue. Riders and bikers experience not only the economical aspect, but also safety. Sadly, lives are lost as a result of, of incorrect repair methods. We want to eradicate that, and we should. We are asking our members to speak or write to their local councillors, making inquiries to get the reassurances that sound investment in best practice and the most efficient kit is a top priority. So say we've got five inspectors that go out and it's all risk rated uh, on the road type, the condition of the road, you know, where the actual potholes are actionable. So something like this would be picked up as an emergency next to the ironwork 
and obviously the depth of it as well. The, the inspectors will look at if there's anything in the wheel tracks of the vehicles, especially cars or motorbikes or any turning circles or anywhere where you know two wheels might uh, be an issue. We do preventive patching with it as well and then especially for motorbikes if we have an oil spillage uh, and we can't put the granules down to remove it, this machine will go out and mill the top of the layer of surface off to reopen that road and make it safe. Yeah, I'm passionate about doing the first time fix, obviously on every repair, and this machine allows us to get that perfect repair and the permanent repair every time. You know, there is other machines, vehicles on the market, but you know, nothing compares to this of giving that permanent repair and making sure that road surface lasts. And the... We know that until funding is significantly increased, local authorities will need to triage their roads, making tough decisions on what and when to repair or resurface. But is this process adequate? The current code of practice, well-managed highway infrastructure, says the level of response should be determined on the basis of risk assessment. It also mentions that the degree of risk from a pothole depends upon not merely its depth but also its surface area and location. But do assessors have the intimate understanding of the specific risks posed to motorcyclists? These are, are the ones that cause us most concern. Coming off that bend, it's almost right on the perfect safe line for a motorcycle. And any, any motorcyclist could hit that. That could throw someone off and then quickly followed by another one. And then yes, you get a double rump here. Quickly followed by more on the other side of the bend. Do, do you prefer to be called Mr. Pothole or Mark? Uh, doesn't matter as long as you fix the roads, that's my attitude. There's requirements on, on local authorities in terms of what they need to fill and there's, there's guidelines for how deep and how wide a pothole needs to be. Is that all written in stone or is it more, more to do with the risk that, that is faced by the road user? It used to be more written in stone in terms of depths. That's changed to a risk model now. That gives them more latitude. And in fact, over the time I've been campaigning, they've accepted deeper and larger potholes before they actually intervene on their intervention criteria. And in terms of positioning, looking at some of the risks that I see on the roads, they're not paying attention, particularly those on two wheels, in terms where bikers tend to run in, in between the middle two tracks of the vehicles. Um, earlier down here, just watching how they were trying to evade uh, like a slalom really because they, they can see it, fortunately they've seen it I mean in some conditions they don't see it and then it's lethal. And you can see it behind me, not only puddles, the wearing surface, I mean that means a loss of grip values, particularly for those on two wheels so cyclists and motorcyclists because you can lose 60% of your uh, grip value with the loss of that wearing surface, so it might not be deep enough to action as a puddle, but if you've got a large enough area and you try to break on it, you haven't got the control you need to, to maintain a safe uh, riding position. Do you do you think the people who go out to, to do the inspections and do the risk assessments, do you think they fully understand what the risks are to different road user groups or are they just purely looking at it from the perspective of a car driver? I think you're, you're right that they don't actually consider those all sorts of users, so whether it be um, cyclists, motorcyclists. I've had to actually pull up authorities with defects on zebra crossings because they say they don't meet their engine wrench criteria I've pointed out that because that's a designated pedestrian route they have to apply footway standards because they're by default they're going to be used by pedestrians um, you know when you're having to actually say that to authorities to say well who's doing your inspections you know should they have got the spec savers um, you know I, I'm not very popular sometimes Martin, there isn't any money, that's the problem. We, we appreciate that, we really do appreciate and understand that, which is why we keep saying when works are done, that they prioritise making that piece of road safe for a motorcycle. Because if it's safe for a motorcycle, it's safe for every kind of vehicle. We are asking local authorities to review the competence of their assessors. We would suggest that the possession of a motorcycle licence is a basic requirement for an assessor, but also what training have they had beyond that? Ask your council to get in touch with MAG to discuss best practice and how we can make the roads safer for motorcyclists while we wait for the increased central government funding. Please take action and support MAG's Resurface Our Roads campaign. Let's see an end to the curse of potholes.